and welcome to Rushed Vibes. I am Jess Rushed Vibes, and to my left is... Oh, you can't say your own name? Oh, I'm sorry. You usually bring me in. Oh, you just say I, something like, His Royal Highness, the King himself, Almighty Merciful. I'm not really feeling you right now, <laughs> so I need you to introduce yourself. Um, my name's David. David Rushing. Half, 50% of Rushed Vibes. And we are officially in the building. In the building. On YouTube and on audio. Hey, you tizzle. So, a couple of things before we get started. One, I owe everybody an apology because this is our first episode since we've gone public. Oh, I was going to say that. Oh, go ahead and say it. You already did. Okay. So, this is our first episode since we've gone public. Rush Vibes is out there for the world to see. Uh, this was not supposed to be our first video podcast. We were supposed to already have two uh, we suffered some uh, shortcomings of uh, startup production, and our video files got corrupted. So, if you're listening, if if you're listening, I'm speaking, ma'am. I'm speaking. How come I don't know that our video? <laughs> files got uh, corrupted? If, you're, if, if you've listened to episodes, I believe two and Were three. Were we hacked? No. Okay. You're hacking my explanation right now is what you're doing. <laughs> so if you've listened to episodes two and three, you probably heard me or us reference YouTube, the episode being on YouTube. I apologize. We did record video, but unfortunately, we're not going to be able to upload them. So this will be the first official video podcast for our YouTube channel. So when you listen to this on Apple or Spotify or tune in or tune in and hopefully eventually Google. Because they're, they're tripping right now. We're, we're having to work with Google. We're having some problems. Uh, after you listen to us on there, feel free to listen to us on YouTube as well. So I just wanted to apologize for that oversight. Wow. So we were hacked by Snowden? We weren't. No. He, don't, he doesn't care about us. The Russians? The no. Russians hacked the Russians? I wish I had... Uh, like a womp womp on the soundboard, but I don't. But I'm going to get that for for next time. I snorted. I didn't yeah. know our files were corrupted. Yeah, I didn't tell you. And see, but folks, you're, but this see, is you're why not, communication no, no, but, is vital. But wait a minute. To the success of not only a marriage, but a podcast. But wait, so you're not, you don't do anything but the post-production. So why would you need I, to know? I volunteer to do post-production all predict, the time. Predict. I was I was rhyming. I was, I'll, I'll get you I'll get you learned up pretty soon. And you're always like, no, I got it. No, it's okay. It is no, okay. You just you just do you just you do. Sit you sit there and look good. You That's what I need beautiful. you to do. And, uh, and you I come up this. you come up with more storylines and more content and more talking points for us to discuss than I do. That's your thing. Your area of expertise. That's your specialty. And mine is the post production. Okay. So before we get into what we're going to get into, before we get into the show, I want to move my mic to the side and I want y'all to see my shirt. It says support your folk. Uh, this is a brand from our neighbor. He lives right there. Mike Brown. He lives oh, right over. Maybe we shouldn't say where you live. Oh yeah. Well, they don't know we're where really we live. Bad about yeah, we are bad about telling business. people business. From Mike Brown. He just, he just launched it. He's had the idea in his mind for a while. He said, you know, pandemic, just like us and like other people, has kind of spurred him to go ahead and get it get it kicked off. So what I'll do is I'll include the link to the website in our show notes on the podcast, and I'll also put it in the description. I always wanted to do this on YouTube, put it in the description of the video. Uh, so if anybody wants to buy a shirt like this, baseball tees, and then they also ha he also has uh, hoodies, and I believe... Um, if you message him, he can get you some special orders as well. So support your folk, uh, whether it be, you know, family members, friends, anybody who's trying to do their thing out in the world, go ahead and make sure you support them. And, um, if you do go ahead and, and purchase a shirt, make sure you let Mike know that David and Jess from Rushed Vibes sent you. And 10% of every purchase will be contributed to Rushed Vibes. No, Mike won't. is not and aware no, of this, um, <laughs> transaction, but, uh, yeah, it won't. It won't. So, so purchase up. We got kids to put through college. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yes, we do. But I mean, Mike, if you want to be a sponsor, 
He's not, you know. Don't listen to Jessica. Jessica, it, for okay. some reason, is hell bent on trying to get us from sponsors. Want, like some, just, sometimes the process is the it, process. You don't even have to be like you could. You could sell mold. So you know one thing I noticed what? is that because we have the monitor to we're the side, we're looking at the monitor <laughs> instead of the camera right here. So I'm gonna try to look at the camera. You can sell mold. I just, I just want someone. Actually, I don't. I have discriminating taste. So anyway, support your folk. Where didn't I? Folk. Didn't I get a shirt? No. Didn't you get me some? I thought you got me a hoodie. No, I said I was going to get you a hoodie. So you didn't? I have not gotten you a hoodie yet, no. But I said I was going to. I didn't say when I was going to. So I'll Don't see. commit. I'll, I'll commit the timelines. Yeah. That's a, another conversation for us to have. Blame my blame my big brother. He's the one on the podcast. Me. Oh, I'm going to get him. Uh, he said if you don't commit, then technically you can't be held responsible if it's not done within a certain period of time. Mm-hmm. Greatest advice I was ever given. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Anywho. So we have a couple of things uh, that we want to talk about this evening on December 28th. This is Monday. We're recording this December 28th. The first episode after we're out live. Like, I was just, I'm just really You're excited like right now. You're unnecessarily hype. I am need you to excited breathe down. Because we've gotten so much feedback, so much um, constructive feedback. Some people have given us some things that we can work on, some things that they would like to see. But most importantly, just the the outpouring of love and support. We debuted top one hundred Apple on Apple Podcast uh, for for society and culture and and relationships. Like Rush Vibes made some noise last week. It did. So we're trying to keep that momentum going. Yes, absolutely. So uh, we'll give you all some instructions at the end of the podcast. But, um, yeah, a few things to talk about. We definitely want to touch on 2020, I believe, and, and kind of look back at the year that was. And, and also, I think, touch on what we're looking forward to in the year Speaking ahead. Speaking of 2020, 2021. this has absolutely nothing to do with the year. But where is Barbara Walters? I don't know. Because 2020 was her show on ABC. And then she, like, created The View. And I ain't seen Barbara Walters in, like, 12 years. I don't know. But they haven't said that she's gone to the other side. So she's got to be somewhere. It's just something that bothers me every once in a while because... You know what bothers me? What? When you don't speak into the mic. Oh, <laughs> uh, Y'all tell you, I'm, just you not, you, I'm just not you rocking fight? him right now. <laughs> you want to fight? Just, you look I'm like just, you want to... You, you, in, you, you know what? Inhaling and exhaling you know like what? you want to fight. I think I might want to fight you. Fight. And well, you know my weapon of choice. <laughs> No, 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 wait, 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 because there is, there is a lead in and a segue to this. So speaking of fights, I'm not sure if you all saw you all being our valued listeners of Rush Vibes and watchers. The Vibe Tribe. Vibe <gasps> Tribe. See, I was trying to coin Vibe Family, but I love Vibe Tribe. We just have to make sure that nobody else is coined it because vibes is, is a very popular term that people throw around these the days. The vibe tribe. So speaking of, Ooh, of. We could do the vibe tribe because we're rushed vibes with the apostrophe D. So take the apostrophe D, the vibe tribe. I think we can talk with our branding consultant and we can put a pin in that and revisit that later. Humming but B. run, run a limb. Yeah. How many shout out to humming B and Missy, uh, Missy Wilson down in. Texas, Houston in area. In the heart of Texas. So I'm trying to get. I don't know. I'm trying to get I to this bit. I don't know what mood I'm in. I'm trying to get to this bit. <laughs> okay. So uh, there's a video that circulated, I believe, either on Christmas Eve or the day before. Um, uh, God's and gift I, at, to the world. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> of uh, an altercation, or should I say a beatdown, an assault with a deadly weapon happened in an Ohio <laughs> convenience store gas station, I believe. There was a belligerent white guy who uh, was a little brave and a little confident and was saying the N-word to a, uh, to a black man um, and was basically taunting him. He, he, in, it was funny. He was trying to say he's no disrespect. <laughs> as he disrespected, as he blatantly disrespected him to his face. Um, and then kept saying it. And then the guy, the black dude, he was like, yo, I'm about to smack you with this with this can of with the beverage can can beverage and why i was like i wish you would and he kind of leaned in like like this and the dude he took the can and smacked him in the face and the can was twisted tea twisted tea now i never heard of twisted tea i have 
uh, I'm not really big on the beverage world, uh, but I am. I am very aware of twisted tea now. Mm-hmm. And what's disappointing is that I felt bad. I didn't feel bad that the, the dude got smacked with the canteen. If you haven't seen it, go on YouTube. It's, Do yourself it's, that it's, favor. It's, it's quality content. I was going to, I was, we were struggling with whether or not to play it here. Um, this, this is, is obviously, it, it's, it's an adult podcast, but there's a little bit too much uh, vulgar language for me to feel comfortable playing this. So uh, if you want to go on YouTube, it's on there. If you want to just search Twisted T, it's, it's on Instagram. It'll, it'll come up I immediately. I would actually recommend do it my way because there were children around. I watched it first. No, without, it's better. No, it's always better audio. with sound. No, it's great because you can just reading body language interpret what is about to happen. So watch it without sound and then go back and you will get such an appreciation when you watch it with sound. So anyways, um, I felt bad because my man, after he smacked dude with the tea and he got a couple of clean shots in and basically let him know that you don't say that, you don't say that around, you don't say it. One, it's like the universal one rule for white people. Like it's the one thing you can't say. Um, he reminded him of that, but also you, if you're going to say it, you definitely don't want to say it in the midst of black people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I felt bad because he wasted his, his twisted no, tea. No, he was still in the store. He probably, no, he walked him. off. And I'm, the tea was the tea was ruined, I, I, but I'm, but I let me do the bit. <laughs> so to pay homage, <laughs> since he couldn't enjoy his twisted tea, I am going to enjoy some twisted tea, and not only am I going to have some, I got one for Jessica too, and she got the peach flavor. So. This is actually, this is momentous for me because I've never had any before. Actually, Um, I've I've never had one either. So I got the lemon. It's pretty good. No, you can't. No, don't do that. Don't take that straw. It's going to be, it's going to be clanging, clang banging around. Don't do it. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. I wouldn't spend more than the two fifty I spent a piece on these. Mm-hmm. Like I wouldn't buy another one. No, nah. well, I don't know. I haven't had the peach flavor. I imagine that tastes a little bit better. No, I'm I'm, I'm good. I guess I'm, you're not going to drink it all in this <laughs> in this hour. So, uh, yeah, not- whoever I don't know if anybody found out my man's name. Uh, I'm sure he eventually went back and got himself another twist of tea. But I just want to let him know that we're drinking in solidarity with you. This is for, for you, uh, Ohio. Yeah, for for letting it be known that. There's just certain things you don't do. So shout out to my random convenience store black man in Ohio. Not the hero. <laughs> not the hero we deserve. But he's the one we needed in that moment. So there's a lot to unpack from the whole interaction. Um, I think the first thing is, you know, in the Bible where it says... We're going to the Bible. Yes. Wow. That, this is how serious it has to go. We went from a bit to he, the Bible. And that he, was quick. I th- and and I, I don't quote the Bible well. I kind of just, you know, I know what about yeah. it says. But there's a scripture. It might be Proverbs. Could be You Psalm. sure you don't want to like Google it before you, nah. you botch it? No. Nah. And it's like, <laughs> because between all of the translations, I'm going to have it right. Okay. And it's like, if he is out there and he doesn't have wisdom, he should ask for it. Um. Race aside, you just shouldn't, you you need to, if you're going to put yourself in a scenario where you are going to verbally accost someone, accost. you need to assess the accostee <laughs> uh, and determine the ratio of success between you, the accoster. Probability. And success. the accosti likelihood of success, and who has the physical dominance? Because an accosting usually results in getting smacked with some twisted tea in the laying of hands. So I'm. That's why I say watch it without audio because without audio, I'm observing this interaction. I'm seeing this 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 black man who you can tell he's trying to do his best not only to compose himself but to perfectly time the moment of impact 
And then you see he, this white gentleman. He also when he when he hit him when he, he had the, he had the underhand grip. He attempted to flip came, the can and, and he up. dropped it the first time, which yeah. which if he had caught it, whew, that just would have added so many stars yeah. to that video. But you know, you, you have this white guy and he clearly didn't have wisdom and he's never sought to have wisdom. Well, he was he was clearly drunk. He was drunk or high or both. He's under the influence. But I don't I mean, I don't care what influence because this guy this this man looked like a bodybuilder. Like this is not someone I want to accidentally bump into in the grocery store. Nah, and I don't, I don't even think that. I mean, he, he, he was just he, a regular dude, but would I mean, you he get, was Would you start with him? He's Probably not, not, but I don't start things with with anybody. He, he, I don't start things with little kids just either no, little kids are something else little kids are vicious uh, he just he was a regular dude no who, he was not a regular yeah, dude yeah he was, he was, was you act big, like he was act a, like he was debo or something he, he, he wasn't debo. debo but he was like his second cousin he was a he was he was a debo big, twice removed he was he was like a muscular john king <laughs> all right so that wraps it up for I us here rush that. vibes for but, the episode because <laughs> I'm, I'm not going is, back down that john king I road i don't care what your mental state is if you are going to get crazy, you need to assess who you are getting crazy with and the likelihood of your survival if this becomes physical. And he did it. And old boy didn't do that. And Most people aren't thinking that logically when they're drunk. I'm just going to put that out there as someone who's been drunk a handful of times. You know, I really thinking not doing ratios and equations and measuring the girth of someone's stature. You're just kind of just running off at the mouth, which is what happened. And sometimes when you run off at the mouth, drunk or sober, you Your get, mouth gets hit. You get smacked with some twisted tea. So I will say that if Perfect, you are amazing, amazing uh free advertisement I know. for twisted tea. It's it's unfortunate I couldn't that, find, you know, it was, it was, these were like the last two on the shelf. It's unfortunate that he didn't catch the can because obviously Twisted Tea cannot use the, the, imp, the moment of impact in their advertising. But if he had been able to flip the can and catch it, they probably could have used just so, that portion for um, some kind of marketing. There's, there's a lot of memes and I think I'm going to post some on, oh on our, on our Instagram. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the famous photo of Malcolm X with the I rifle saw, looking up the, it. Matt, re- Matt shared Yeah, that. Matt Matt shared the the side by side with a <laughs> dude standing at the window with a can of twisted tea looking out as if he had the rifle. Oh my god. Like the internet is can be a scary place. It's but un- in moments it's moments of moments like these, it, it is a fantastic place and I am Have you read so the back of your can? Of it. it says um be a little twisted, submit your own twisted photo. <laughs> Oh, so I think we should utilize. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's. We should like just. I'm gonna grab a frame of this. If you want to shift yours a little bit like that, I'm gonna grab this frame and I'm just gonna send it to him. Like, yo, you guys are featured on Rush Vibes podcast, Rush a Vibes. top 100 podcast. And if you want to be a sponsor, <laughs> you know what? I would take. I would take some see? Twisted Tea sponsorship. See? I will say, if you are an investor, now is probably the time to invest in Twisted Tea because I feel I, I feel like it's going to be on a quick come up. And they're all and they're already just looking at their website. They're already kind of like hip, trendy, millennial, kind of out there type branding. Um, so a convenience store <laughs> beatdown is like right up their alley in terms of the- <laughs> right up there. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just something. It's just it's a very edgy, divey kind of thing to happen. <clears throat> so uh, they definitely got some free advertising. Like I think when because we're going to take a break in a little bit, I think I'm going to move the monitor so, so I'm you not can stop looking, looking to the right instead of because <clears throat> oh, I just want to make sure I'm in frame. And I don't know why I didn't think of using the monitor. Like we were trying to use this like little seven inch joint, and it's so far away that we couldn't really even see each other anyway. So. I finally got tired of it and almost chucked it out of the house. But but he chucked it to the couch instead. Just in case I change my mind. You know, <laughs> cooler cooler heads prevail sometimes. But yeah, definitely get yourself uh, a Twisted Tea. Support uh, Black Weaponry. Um. <laughs> Black 
what they're like. It just it, mine just tastes like a peach tea. It doesn't really even taste like there's alcohol in yeah, it. Yeah, it's, so. it's um. What's the percentage on it? Mine was five. Five percent. Yeah, it's not very um. It's not very strong. It's it's not. It won't, it, I mean, it might get somebody twisted. It might get like a. I think if you like a nineteen it, year old, and I'm you, not advocating for underage drinking. Of course, no. it might get like a, a fresh twenty one year old who's never had a alcoholic beverage in their life. Yeah, might get them a little twisted because this is a twenty four ounce, but uh, as a bourbon and whiskey connoisseur, you know, this is like this is my appetizer. This is my yo. If he catches this the is buzz, my drink. I am taking pictures and this I is am my, posting. <laughs> this is the 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 drink. That takes me to the This the is big water. Drink. Yeah, this is water. This is what they bring out at the beginning of the meal. Okay. So um yeah, definitely go check out the the video though. It's it's quality, quality content. And um in case you like I kind of said in the beginning, in case you haven't learned or you are unaware in the year of our Lord twenty twenty, it's still not okay to say the N word if you're of the Caucasian persuasion. Mm-hmm. And the gentleman um, wasn't wearing a mask. He wasn't wearing a he mask. I just realized mask. that. Um, but you know, if he had been wearing a mask, maybe the impact wouldn't. Have been <laughs> <laughs> it's the a impact mask, wouldn't have been as wouldn't have been as severe. Um, yeah, that's that's wild. So uh, that was our our fun topic of the day. I mean, we like to have fun in everything we talk about, but I, I definitely had to discuss it. You know, it's, this is our first, like, he like also said, went to what? Four different stores. I, went, I, I drove in like a, down. I drove to four stores in like a, a five mile radius of our house to track down the 24 ounce. Cause there was a 15 pack, but I think it was like the eight ounce can. So I didn't really, we didn't, like, I'm we not going to drink that much. Yeah, I'm not, I need the, I need the act. I needed the actual weapon, the literal weapon that was used to slay <laughs> Slay the racist dragon. Slay the racist dragon. So I needed, I needed to see. I needed, I needed to feel the power. I needed to know what he felt like. I needed to feel it. So now that I've, I've wielded it, I can, uh, I can rest. I can be at ease. I was going somewhere. Um, yeah, still not, still not okay to say, Mm-mm. say the N word if you're, if you're white, because if there's some twisted tea around, you liable to get caught. Mm-hmm. Stay woke. Yeah. But um, yeah, so we, we've got a couple other topics that we want to talk about. Definitely uh, kind of reflecting over the year. I'm going to just, this is Jessica's topic. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing which way she goes with it. But before we do, just want to take a quick break and we will be right back. Here's a word from our sponsors. <laughs> All right. We're back. We're back. And I have moved the monitor. And thank so you to now. our sponsors. Who don't exist yet, but will. We are speaking it into existence. Because yes, we live by faith. Oops, that's kind of loud, sorry. And not by sight. Or faith and not by hearing. Right? Anyway. I wanted to talk about 2020. The year of our COVID. Year of our Lord. The year of our COVID. Um, because one... Some of us are still on March 13th, 2020. Some of us being me. Um, And the idea that March 13th, 2021 is literally three months away um, is troubling because 2020 had such an awkwardly uncomfortable pace to it. It was fast and simultaneously slow. And now here we are a whole almost an entire year into a pandemic and i would say it's probably a year now um because it was probably like floating around well before it we heard just, about it it was just one person so one person coming from china <sighs> well, it begun by april maybe we can maybe get the disinfectant i need clorox to like- lysol I think you're gonna look. I think you're gonna look into that. I think we need to do some kind of bet, <laughs> and if you lose, like no Trump impressions. I've only got. You're it's still less gonna than, keep doing impressions it's less, of him. It's less than a month now. No, when he's gone, he's gone. No, then he's I'll, part. He's part of your joy now. <laughs> I really enjoy the Trump impersonations. Um, they're, they're fun. 
And though 2020 has been a trying it's and just, difficult. Just one, one bears and coming, coming from China. My man, I need to just, <laughs> I just need you to shut it up. Oh, I'm sorry. Shut it up. My bad. Though it has been a very difficult and trying year um, in more ways than can be accounted for, there is a great lesson that I think has been learned from 2020. Um, but it's an individual lesson. I think everyone's, everyone's taken something from 2020. Um, some people are like the I D G A F that's their lesson. And I don't give a, Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, that's their lesson. I'm, I'm pure. I don't, I don't speak oh that, my gosh. that dirty language. Um, some people are, you know, very extreme and like really buckle down. Some people are wavering in the middle. Um, but I, I really think that despite it all, we all learned something. Um, yeah. We learned resilience. We learned strength. We learned unity. We learned distance. Yeah. Um, and, I'm I remember this time last year preparing to go into 2020 and I had set all of the ex these expectations for what this year was supposed to be for myself. Um, I was pregnant. I had just, you know, finished up my last courses to get my bachelor's degree. I was getting ready to turn 30. So, you know, 2020 was really supposed to be my year. I was going to have that baby. I was going to snap back. I was going to turn 30. I was going to get the career. I was just going to be it. Like, you, y'all weren't even going to be ready for who I was supposed to be. And I look at, at a certain point of the year, I was really down and I was really discouraged and I, I just, you know, frustrated because I couldn't accomplish all of these expectations I had set for myself, which in part kind of goes to why I don't set goals. Um, I, and I know that sounds crazy because people are like, oh, you got to set goals, you live up stuff, blah, blah, blah. But I've always said, you know, there's an extreme disappointment that you can put on yourself if you set a goal and you don't live up to it. And that's a pressure I don't necessarily want to carry on myself because life has enough pressure as it is. True. So I spent a lot of 2020, you know, waiting for the pandemic to lift so that, you know, I just wanted to wake up one day and it'd be gone. And then, you know, things would go my way. Mm. But I really quickly learned that I literally have no control over my life. Um, and that's not even with the pandemic. It's also the fact that I'm a mother of two people who, you know, run my life um but there's you and know, a wife and a wife you know so y'all know don't, what that don't, is don't forget about me over here yeah so i'm, I'm quiet but you know you don't need to forget about me yeah so i'm definitely kind of, kind of important too help me uh um so you know it's horrible it's you're making me lose my train of thought just be quiet it's just one person oh my god I knew this was coming. Coming from, um, China, coming from China. And though we've lost a lot of people, unfortunately, unnecessarily um, due to this pandemic, and we've been placed in this lockdown, not lockdown phase 1.254, I really think before going into 2020, one, excuse me, you should really just take a moment to appreciate what you have like this year to my knowledge we haven't gotten or been exposed to covid um we suspect we had it in the beginning of the year but we're not i was we're gonna not, say we got pretty sick we're in, not in, certain the in whole early february family, even the newborn we all got knocked out i got some pictures jessica probably won't let me if share you, of our oldest she <laughs> she was looking rough and you know me i, I come from a family where you know we might have some issues. We may get in a fight. We may be upset. But pretty quickly after everybody gets over, we're going to make fun about it. So you just got to have thick skin where I come from. So once yeah. I knew that she was okay and she was going to be fine, I just went back and looked at the pictures. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, this kid looks. <laughs> she went through it. And she's like the healthiest of us all. Solace is the type of person who she's she sick looking, Monday she with a fever. Rough. By Tuesday night, like, she's fine. Um oh, yeah. So to our knowledge, you know, everyone in our immediate family has, has been healthy, has lived. Um, we've, we've been blessed for the most part. Um, and I'm thankful for that. But as I go into 2021, I've realized, like, 
I legit don't want to hear New Year, New Me. Um, I'm not saying it. I don't want to hear it. Hmm. Uh, because regardless of what you change about yourself, you're still the same you. Like, like it's mm. you're still you. No, mm. there's no, 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 no. Yes, yes. You're no. still you. No, if you say New Year, New Me. I disagree. What, what's, what about you is going to change? Whatever you plan on, but you're whatever still you, you, whatever you work on, something new has has not existed before. You're still in your body. No. You're still no. I just feel like people take the new year, new me too far. See this. This is this is part of one of the, one of one of the things that irk me about um, society we live in now, and in, in that it's it's heavily it's very socialized, and that social media. Uh, is a great outlet for a lot of people, but it's also a sounding board for a lot of people who don't need to be sounding. Like if you wake up on January 1st, 2021, and you feel like it's a clean slate, it's an opportunity for you to be a different version of yourself, a better version of yourself, which would be new because it's, it's not the previous. It's still you. It's still you, but you're a new version you're of yourself. Proof. I'm just New saying, me is 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 still is obviously me because me is in the statement. It's implied. It's me, but it's a new version of me. So why would you not want people? Because why would you not want people to be better? I want people to be better. So why would that? Why would that bother but you? But I just don't think they need to put the pressure on themselves it's, to be a new look, a new person. Pressure gonna burst pipes, a or it's gonna make diamonds. It's new. gonna do one of two things. It's gonna make diamonds, or it's gonna burst bust pipes. I think 2020 has taught us. Some people need pressure. That we don't have control over our circumstances around us. So, saying new year, new me, maybe really just means it's a new year, but I'm just going to make improvements on certain parts of you, of me, but not the whole me. But if you, one part of you were to improve... That would still mean it's a new you. No, yes. it's the same me nah. improved. Because because okay, we're getting the, we're no this is this is this is semantics is what it is. Because and this I'm not, term I'm not new and improved it. is an, is an oxymoron. It. I'm not going to do it because something can't be new and also improved. Yes, it can. No, it can't. It's either the new I've, or it's improved. The you, iPhone twelve. Is a new handset because it has never been made. Yes, the iPhone no. I'm speaking, <laughs> Madam Madam Vice Madam Co Producer Co Host. I'm speaking. The iPhone 12 is a brand new handset that has never been has never been seen in public before this October or November, this past October, November, or whatever. It has made improvements on the prior iteration. But is it is a brand new and improved handset because it did not exist before. The iPhone 11 was a different device with a different name. So I don't understand how you can say you can't be new and improve. It's like it's it's, it's totally moron. Something is either new or it is improved. It is a new version of a prior. Specifically speaking to the iPhone, it is a new version of a former model, but we're and not it speaking is improved. On the iPhone, we're speaking on you, people. It's trans. It's 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 no. a parallel. It's 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 the exact same. It's the exact same. It's not. It is. It's not. I just don't think it's necessary to put the pressure okay. on yourself so, that as you go into a new year, so Jessica doesn't you want you to need to be new. You are great. Who you are. Yes, everyone has areas of improvement. So there may be opportunities for improvement of yourself. But if you improve an area of yourself, you are not new. You're still you. Whatever day you were born is the day you came to this earth. And you're that was the it, last time. You're making it you very hard for me to believe in the slogan on this T-shirt right now. Because I am not supporting this. I'm done. No, it's... I, I also okay, so I agree with you. Yes, you should encourage people to be to improve themselves, 
however they see fit, wherever they, they identify weaknesses in themselves and to put their best foot forward in terms of improving their, their confidence, their health, whatever they feel like they need to improve on. Um, but if somebody wants to be a new version or reinvent themselves, you've heard that phrase before, I'm sure. And there are yes. people who have reinvented themselves. But a reinvention means the product has already been invented and you're just improving. But it's still... Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> I think the the important thing here is that we both agree that yes, you should um, strive to better yourself. And if you see 2021 as a turn of the page from one of the worst chapters in um, the worldly history and probably your life, if you've been alive long enough, um, then yeah, you know, go for it. Definitely see, take 2021 as an opportunity to better your circumstances as, as best you can, as you can control it. Because like you said, a lot of things are not within your control. You can't control whether or not there's going to be a global pandemic and whether or not we live in a country with, you know, the, the most cases um, and whether or not local government shuts down or whether you like, there are certain things that you can't control, but the things that you can control uh, your, your, your habits, your sleep habits, your eating habits, your, you know, your, your physical activity, how, how, how frequently you're physically active, um, <clears throat> your literacy, like there are different, there are a lot of things that you can control and that you can improve a lot of skills and, and, and habits that you can improve on without, you know, being in, you know, having a job or being, health, you know, like things that you can control within the worldly circumstances is what I'm trying to say. So definitely strive to, to do that. Um, like I know myself, I know myself, uh, I am horrible at remembering things. It's terrible. And I keep telling myself, I've told myself year after year after year, no, I just need to focus. <laughs> I, I can remember, I just need to focus on remembering. And as I try to focus on remembering, I forget. I, the more I focus on remembering, the more oh, I forget. forget. So I've decided this year I'm going to start using, utilizing a uh, planner, essentially a digital planner. So I just literally, if I commit to something, pull out my phone because it's it, it it's it's a universal app it spans across my mac my ipad my iphone just plug it in and that way it's there set up enough reminders so that i don't forget it um and i just plan on doing that and that way i won't be as as forgetful because i just have a horrible i would say short-term memory but i just think my memory in general is just, is just trash so you know that's one thing i i definitely plan on improving i've started now i haven't waited until january 1st but you know, I, I can definitely, um, I, I, I think a lot of people are ready to turn the page and I think that they're looking forward to this year and hopefully it won't be any worse than, than this year has been. And there have been some people who have thrived in 2020 for sure. People who have Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos and, and many of private citizens who have, you know, done well in the stock market. People have launched businesses and, mm -hmm. And um, our, we have my god sister is launching her own business next year, and she's used this year as uh, shout out to Marguerite, love you. Despite what you say about me on and how you torment and terrorize me on social media, he's fine. Uh, uh, she's she's uh, been in the planning stages of launching a, a business, and I believe she's working with Humming B B design. I was gonna say hummingbird. It's the it's the twisted tea. It's hitting me a little bit. I mm. took too many swigs. Mm -hmm. I had some bourbon earlier though. So okay. it's not like I'm uh, I wanna revisit something because you're going on this tangent. I am you know I'm sorry guys you um, know I do tangents. I'm sorry. You said you've already implemented this for which you want to improve on. What made you start now as opposed to just waiting the customary January first of the new year? That's when I start being brand new. I don't know. Uh, well, if 2020 has taught me anything, is that life isn't guaranteed. <laughs> so I figure, why wait? You know, uh, if 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 you can, if <clears throat> you do enough self reflection and introspection, and you realize you know you're lacking in certain areas, and you can identify opportunities within yourself 
to be better. Uh, I don't see a point in waiting, you know, for a certain date or, or time or whatever, or pushing it off because another one of my weaknesses is that I procrastinate. Now I get this from my mom and she admittedly um, is, is guilty of this and we talk about it all the time. So if I were to wait until January 1st, that would be me, you know, living mm-hmm. in the procrastination. That's already a bad habit of mine. So I figure why, why put it off when I can, I can do it today because you know, nothing's really, nothing's really guaranteed. So that means that you're going to start doing stuff around the house. Like, first of all, I don't you talk about my personal business on, on the podcast. Cause we currently live in box city. <laughs> I can't, I'm going to break them down and take them to the dump, but today was, no pun intended, but today was Boxing Day, so I don't even know if the, I don't even know if the, the dump was open. What so, is Boxing Day? It's a holiday. Didn't you tell me? It was like it's a the holiday. day after Christmas in other countries. Nah, but they observed it. I think they're observing it. They're observing it. No, no. Maybe it was Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't remember. I didn't write it down. <laughs> I got I didn't write it down. But no, I'm going to take, take the boxes. I just needed. Um, I couldn't take it today. I'll take them at some point. At some point. It doesn't matter, though, because the boxes Just take don't... Them, take them before the new year. The boxes don't... I mean, they don't really affect you, so... They're currently sitting in my my office. That you don't even use. I was so. in there when you brought said boxes into Anyways. my office. <clears throat> Anyways. See, I was going to compliment you for implementing this strategy of self-improvement now, but now I'm not going to do it. That's fine. I think our, our devoted, valued listeners out there, they, they see the goodness in me. They know I'm a decent man. Despite the lies that you spread. What? <laughs> what? Do y'all see what I have to deal with? Uh, so, uh, speaking on 2021. New year, new husband. New year. <laughs> uh, new year, new residence. Yeah. Bye. No, you ain't. Uh I am I am looking forward to uh, some life returning to some semblance of, of normal. Now I know there are some things that that won't be the same. You know, like business travel probably won't ever reach the levels it it was at because you can just hop on a Zoom call or a Skype oh or or whatever. What I'm just Zooms are is just becoming overwhelming because most Zooms now could just be emails. That's true. Uh, my my company. Um, hopefully, not too many of my my coworkers listen to this our podcast. But yeah, we we're definitely very uh, meeting heavy. And uh, as a as a manager, one of the things that I've taken, one of the things that I've adopted is actually not scheduling meetings just to schedule meetings. Like only schedule meeting if there are like big action items that you need to to cover with the team and walk them through. Otherwise, if it's just to talk about performance from the week before, if it's to reiterate a policy or or a standard, um, if it's just to say, hey, good job, team, like put it in an email Mm -hmm. and then let them do what you've hired them to do, which is be productive and and work. Meetings, you know, can get, well, not all meetings aren't necessary, but meetings can get, if you have them just for the sake of having them, you can get to the point where you're at, they're actually um, destructive Mm -hmm. because you, you break up, you break. Uh, productivity yeah like if i'm being productive and i gotta stop because i gotta go sit in a meeting for an hour where i really get nothing from it and now i gotta try to get back into that pick my my productivity level back up um and if you have to do that hour or every other hour throughout the day it's like mm-hmm. it's like I'm, I'm i can't really be effective so i do think meetings are i think there are certain types of meetings that are necessary so if it's like a creative conceptual meeting um okay we're gonna throw paint at the wall see what sticks those type of meetings because you have the, a meeting of the minds and you know different people's brains are going and you know you're feeding off of each other yeah. but a lot of times if you can create an agenda for the meeting i feel like you can just type it up yeah. type said meeting in 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 the agenda and email it out. Um, I find that especially in this zoom era, it seems as if meetings are now a form of micromanaging. I think a lot of companies are like, Oh, our team is remote and we don't trust our people to be doing their work. So if we keep scheduling these meetings and giving them reasons to be in our face, they are confirming the insecurity that we have that they're, 
doing their work, which is to your point is distracting because, you know, say you're getting into something an hour, 30 minutes before a meeting, you don't want to get too deep with it because you know, you're going to have to stop and hop into this meeting. So you're stunting the productivity of your team because you're trying to ensure that your team is doing work. So I, I'm just not a fan of meetings. Well, I think some of it is, you know, companies have been forced into this, this new way of operating and a lot of them just aren't used to it. So they're kind of, you know, figuring, feeling their way through it and figuring it out. Mm -hmm. So I think the longer that this is, as, as this becomes the new normal, the more, you know, companies and teams and, and businesses, they'll, they'll adjust. And I think you may see a pullback. Like, like, I don't know if we'll see it. Like at my company, we're still very meeting heavy. Um, you know, there we have, <laughs> we have meetings where we give updates on, <laughs> give status updates on, on status updates. It's like we just give updates where I could just fill out a spreadsheet or whatever. Um, so that, that is very much still a part of our, our culture and, you know, that, that could change as, as we kind of figure this, figure this thing out. It's, it's still very new for a lot of companies. So, I mean, I'm, you know, I don't want to sit here and, and act like I don't appreciate what, you know, stakeholders and, and executives and, 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 you know, CEOs and what they're, what they're going through having to kind of reimagine business and this new, uh, this new normal. Um, I just, I've just never been a fan of meetings though, or PowerPoints mm -hmm. and decks. I've just never been. And then when I started reading the, like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and a lot of like these, these big popular CEOs who leads or at the helm of very successful companies actually feel the same way that I do. I was like, Oh, like I'm not crazy. You like should Elon be a billionaire. No, no, you shouldn't be a billionaire. No, because I haven't. I don't have a billion dollar. I haven't executed on a billion dollar idea yet. But you think like the billionaires do. No, I just don't like meetings. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that a couple billionaires don't either. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean I belong in their company. But um, no, I, I'm definitely looking forward to <clears throat> like returning to a little bit of normal. You know, um, you know our economies, economies have started to open back up and some have, have kind of regressed a little bit and have have uh, shut some things down as as cases have continued to rise again. Um, but I'm I'm really looking forward to you know with the vaccine news maybe, you know, by the before the end of 2021, you know we can just be out and about and feel okay whether we're wearing masks or not. Like and the I'll, kids I, can I, be back in school. Yeah, I still plan on wearing a mask probably for for a while when I go just to be on the safe side. But you know just be nice to be out and. You know, just see people not so tense, you know, and it's it's very tense when you go out now. You just, it's just you just, yeah, you just feel it. Like people are just so, so afraid. <laughs> and then someone gets and, close to you, you're like, wait, yeah, I mean, why, and, and why right, are you all up on me, Susie? And, right, and rightfully so, like they said, like we're fighting an invisible enemy and you don't really know Who's if droplets or It's like an <laughs> so air you STD. Were, yeah. So, and you um, don't know who gave it to you, though. And most people don't know who give them if they're that, if they're active enough. I mean, you 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 can usually track it down. But so earlier, so this is no, little, no, no, before you no. before you go before you go, because we need to take one more break and then we're gonna wrap up. Okay. From here's a word from our sponsor. <laughs> All right. Thank you to our sponsors. <laughs> um, I can't wait until we have a sponsor. Actually, have a sponsor I that we have can put like my sponsor speech that I'm. But going you don't to, know what the what matter. the product is going to be matter. or the service is going to be. Matter. It, it can be like groundhog make up, he's repellent. He's going to make up a... I like, and the groundhog repellent is... That's a horrible, horrible, <laughs> That's just how horrible. passionate I am about that's us terrible. having a sponsor. Um, All right. What I was going to say is, earlier you mentioned things going back to um, normal. And it got me thinking, I've mentioned this to you before, but you probably weren't listening because sometimes you don't listen to me. Um, huh? Okay. Say what? Jesus, take the wheel. What I was saying was when you think back, like pre pandemic, I never wore a facial mask. Like I never, I never had a reason to wear a mask over my face. And, you know, you go to California or like 
China or Japan and you'll see people wearing masks and you're like, why are you wearing a mask? Like what, what's wrong with you? But through this pandemic, as I'm thinking about it, how often did you have a cold and you went out and you went to work and you exposed yourself to other people? How often did you potentially have the flu and you went out and you went to work and you exposed yourself to other people? And in hindsight, how absolutely disgusting is it the fact that we as a society didn't necessarily take any efforts to keep our ailment to ourselves? Like, if you had a cold, you just went out. And, I mean, think of all of the medication commercials and people are sneezing in public and it's it's disgusting and droplets are everywhere. And, you know, if you think about, like, in China... People, when they, I I can't remember what I was watching, but they were talking about how when people are feeling under the weather, they wear a mask because they want to protect other people. They don't want to pass their symptoms on to other people and they recognize they still need to go out. But that's never been something that we in our society have ever done. It's just, oh, you're sick, you go to work, you're sick, you're, you're not feeling too well, okay, you can still go to school. And then from you going to school, you're contaminating everyone in the classroom, and then they're going to go home, and they're going to contaminate everyone in their home, and then that the, that home is going to go to work. and cont- So it's just like... So I think, <clears throat> I understand what you're saying, and mm-hmm. I think there are a few things at play. Number one, um, it's very much American work culture that you just got to, well, a lot of people have to go to work, mm-hmm. number one, because they're not paid adequately. Um, and, you know, they have one, two, three jobs um, and, and, you know, have to do that just to make ends meet. So whether you're sick or not, if you're able to get up and go, you got to go mm-hmm. because you got to, you got to survive. Uh, number two, um, I think the media plays a role and I, and <laughs> I, I don't, I, you all should know something about me. I'm not one of these people who likes to blame the mainstream media like a lot of people do. Wrong. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not one of those people, but I think the media does play a role in that, you know, they, uh, you know, every piece of headline news, every ticker, every news break, every breaking news thing is, is COVID cases and, you know, this many people die from COVID. So if, if all people are hearing is that, oh man, people are dying from COVID, then they're going to take it seriously. And because this is a relatively new phenomenon, then a lot of it's caught the nation and a lot of nations off guard and they, you know, governments shut down, local governments shut down. You know, that's kind of, that's kind of played a role in, in people's, um, uh, them taking the, the pandemic seriously. Uh, you're like, if you look up and every time you look at a newspaper or your phone or the TV, thousands of people have died I'm like, oh shoot! Like maybe I should go ahead and mask up, or maybe I shouldn't go out if I'm not feeling that well. Uh, but that leads me to point number three, and that America is very much an indiv- you know, a lot of people are, are individuals and they only care about themselves and maybe those around them. But everybody else, it's kind of like, well, it's not really affecting me, or I got to do this, I got to do that. I want to go on this trip. I don't want to sit at home just because I have a cold. You know, I'll be fine. So I think there's a lot of that at play as well. People just kind of are selfish. That's just kind of American. That, I think that might be human nature, but it's definitely American <laughs> culture. Our hands to just down the selfish kind of be country in the world. Most selfish. Uh, Selfishest country. <laughs> that's, that's, and I like how I said that's it. Not, that's not how it works. I like the way I said it. Um, so I think there's there's multiple things at play as as to why. But yeah, I mean, think about it. If 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 the news, if the media... Just all of a sudden was like, yo, there's a new strain of the common cold <laughs> and and it's lethal and it's killing. It's killed like 60,000 Americans in the last month. You would. And they were like, if you feel like you have this, if you have the sniffles and you're in and, and you're sneezing, you got a runny nose, stay home, isolate, wear a mask if you have to go out, but don't go out unless you absolutely have to. You would probably see a lot of people uh, not go out and call out of work, and, and and companies would be like, "Hey, if you feel like you have the common cold, stay home." <laughs> it's 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 a lot of it is is messaging, and um, I don't want to say you know I don't. This kind of lends credence to the whole sheep 
theory that American, a lot of majority of Americans are just sheep. They just do whatever, whatever the government, or whatever the media tells them. But if, if a lot of the signaling coming from media and local governments was that, yo, if you got a cold, stay home. I think more, you know, but then this is outside of COVID. Like if this had happened in, in place of COVID, I think you would see similar, you know, similar um, decision making in the people who like to stay home or wear a mask if they went out. So, I mean, in a sense, maybe it's a, I won't say a good thing, but I mean, if more people are wearing masks mm-hmm. while they're going out, who knows what, what that is preventing if, if, if not only COVID, maybe other things from spreading. Yeah, because the flu um, is actually down this year from reports that I have seen on the news, yeah. which is... And I haven't been, other than February, when I was still going out among people, I haven't been sick. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's almost like it's getting ready to be a whole year in yeah. another couple of months. So I've had allergies, but that's about it. Yeah, so... Um, you know, it's funny. I thought we were going to talk about like 2021, what we were looking forward to. And we're just talking about like how nasty people used to be. I mean, it's disgusting when you think <laughs> when about they, it. When like, they used to go out, I thought oh, we were. Oh, I have flu symptoms. I'm at, still going to go out promise, and expose myself. The promise that is America in 2021. Look, we ain't, we ain't motivational no, speakers No, no, we're talking about how y'all nasty asses used to be out with a cold and just sneezing and then touching doorknobs and. Shaking hands, shaking hands, hugging and babies, not washing your hands after you use the bathroom, Ugh. going to work, touching keyboards, not sanitizing. I'm just saying, I, th- Tragic. I, I think it's just, I think it's disgusting. And you know, the flu, the flu is a serious killer too. So yeah. that should be, that should have been like, Hey, if you have the flu, <laughs> if all you got to do is take uh hydrocodone, you'd be all right. <laughs> Okay, y'all. So before we get out of here, real quick, we got to tell you the quick, story. Quick aside, you know, because I love my I love my size and Jessica's. Let me let in. me let me no, play, no, 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 no. But no. let me until I, I'll tell the story until I get to the point where I came home, and then you can pick up. So I used to work in the field. This was like four years ago. I was in the field. Um, I used to work for uh, a di- digital media research company or whatever, and it kind of involved us going into people's homes and them allowing us to to measure um, their media usage. So I was installing this equipment in this house. It, luckily, it happened to be like 10 minutes down the road from the house. And I was working. It was probably early winter. So like and maybe... the flu. Was it, like, it was probably like January. I think and it was after Christmas. went into people's houses. <clears throat> and I was feeling fine. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the, the installation, putting the equipment, I just felt like my energy level just dropped from like 100 to like 10. And I felt it happening. And I just got really weak. I got faint. And um, uh, luckily, I was working on the job with a couple of a couple of guys. And I said, "Hey, I gotta I gotta get out of here. I'm not feeling well." And they're like, "All right, we're you know we're pretty much done anyway." So I came home that night. Told Jess this was before um, our oldest was born. And I said, "I just I'm just not feeling well." So I got into bed. And then the next morning, I tried to get up. I actually got dressed, and I had a conference call. And I was like, "I, I'm, I was planning on going back out to work, but I just." I just didn't have it. So I called in and and Jessica was working at the time. So I called her and I was like, Hey, do we have any medicine? I'm not feeling well. I think I may have the flu. And so, so <laughs> I told him to take, so I being the woman of the house knew how our medicine was organized. So at the time I kept medicine upstairs in our um, guest bathroom in the drawer so I knew we had like a generic brand acetaminophen. And I told him, I said, take two acetaminophens and just lay down. So he was like, all right, we're texting. I was like, all right, cool. Backtracking. I had had a procedure maybe a year earlier in that same year. So it's 2014. We just got married. Um, so I had other prescriptions, narcotic grade prescriptions <laughs> in the house. So he takes, he's like, okay, cool. I'm going to take these two and I'm going to go to sleep. Um, side note, this dude is the most annoying person to care for when he gets sick. Because when he gets sick, he doesn't ask for like soup or stuff. He asked for like legit meals. So that particular sickness, he asked for barbecue bacon burgers for dinner. And that's just always bothered me because it doesn't (laughs) make sense that someone who is ailing and 
in And what did you do? I made you barbecue. You came home and you made it for your man exactly what you did. And it was delicious. Uh, mind you, we it were still the in best. the we were still in the newlywed phase. It was the best burger we I've ever had in my life. We're still in the newlywed phase. But go ahead, but tell the people how I took so how you David led me took, how David you led me to take into narcotics. The drawer and he found a bottle that said acetaminophen. Yes. And he took two of those bottles. I mean, two of those pills. Two of the bottles. Um, I came home hours later um, and found David damn near half dead on our upstairs section. I was like, and I'm calling him like David, David, and he's uh, he's 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 gone. He's borderline ODing. I think nothing of it. I go into the bathroom for some reason because I we didn't really use that bathroom. I randomly went into the bathroom. And I find that on the counter is my prescribed bottle of hydrocodone. Now, if you have ever been prescribed hydrocodone, it is a form of acetaminophen. So the bottle said hydrocodone acetaminophen. Um, So David took two, not one, but two hydrocodones and has lived to tell the tale. Um, the best flu ever <laughs> <laughs> yeah because you didn't have it yeah, you damn near high. died that was the best sleep and somehow the best appetite it was just and somehow fantastic. this was my fault it yeah. was it was my fault that right next to the bottle was a big white bottle that said a cinnamon that i got from like sam's club or something he didn't see that you should have said don't take the pills in the red bottle i didn't why would you take someone else's prescription I just I, you said acetaminophen. I looked for the first bottle I found that said acetaminophen. You know I don't read. You know men don't read. We don't read instructions. <laughs> we don't, and read, that's, and we that, don't read directions and, on and maps. That's how we get you to sign we this just, post we just up. Figure it out. <laughs> So yeah, that's our random. How did we get here? Oh, because people are nasty and they've been going out with the flu for years and not wearing masks. So moving forward, 2021, if you're sick, keep your butt at home. If you've got the flu, you already have masks. So just put them on. Like, so, um, I really did think that we were going to, uh, talk about the promise and I mean, we can empower of, you. Of 20, we can empower you. Next that episode. may have to wait until till the next episode, but we should do a uh, bonus definitely, episode. Definitely continue to practice social distancing and, and washing your hands for twenty and seconds. Safe and safe sanitation. Hi, you thought I was going to say safe sex, but wearing, you should practice that too. Wearing a mask as well uh, as as we go into twenty twenty, because a lot of frontline workers and politicians are getting their their vaccine shots now, but the mass majority of the American public, you know, probably won't see the vaccine until, you know, late, late spring, early summer, if, if that. So we still have a ways to go. So we, you know, we still need to, you know, observe the, the guidelines as, as best we can. Uh, if, if you choose to, uh, do so. Stay away from the UK. Cause they got, <laughs> yeah, they, that. Got, they got that new, that new COVID. That new, that, that, that new and new, improved. New, COVID. <laughs> new year, new COVID. <laughs> 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 on that note uh like i said this uh very excited uh just to be just to be doing this this is just just awesome i mean this is like 11 it might even be midnight uh and you know we're just having fun chopping it up uh you know the kids are asleep so really really excited to for rush vibes to be a thing and for you all to be watching and, and to be listening to us as well so we're gonna we're, we're gonna close uh, and I will just implore you all, you know, like I said, we, we debuted top 100 in Apple podcast. So we really, uh, appreciate the initial love you all showed us, but if you haven't feel free to go ahead and leave a review, not just on Apple, but on Spotify as well, uh, rate us, leave a review that actually helps us show up, um, as other people search in the, whether they're searching for vibes or searching for podcasts like ours, it'll, it'll help us show up and that'll just kind of increase, increase our awareness. So, uh, continue to show love. We really appreciate you guys. Um, like I said, we're available on Apple, Spotify, tune in. I will, uh, we will definitely let you know once Google approves us. It's been like two weeks, Come on, Google. two weeks going. I'm, I'm hoping that it'll, it'll, it'll be rec- rectified soon. Uh, but we will definitely let you guys know when, when we're available there. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Obviously, you're watching us um, on YouTube or, or you, you have the ability to watch us watch us on YouTube and check us out at RushVibes.com. Feel free to uh, slide us some 
some topics that you want us to listen to yeah. or if you know you know some people doing some great things here in charlotte or maybe mm-hmm. not even necessarily in charlotte that i would be interested uh in in doing our show or who we should you know you would like to see as an interview uh, like i said we're currently compiling a, a just crazy guest list Epic. Uh, of, of people who we can't wait to, to get in front of of the microphone in front of the camera and, and kind of share the stories with you guys that'll be coming later in 2021 um as we close 2020 as this will be the the last episode of 2020 i think we're gonna have a bonus episode no i don't think we're going to um, i feel it in my spirit we're just looking forward to 2021 and, and uh taking this thing to the to new heights you know, we're just cause grateful that you all are are along for the ride. So uh, don't forget, support your folk. Uh, I'll drop the link on our show notes and also uh, on social media when we advertise this episode, and then on YouTube in the in the description down below. And fifteen percent of all proceeds. <laughs> no, from no, stop trying folk. to take that man's money. <laughs> stop trying to take that man's money. Uh, and this is this is going to be a, a reoccurring theme on Rush Vibe. So you know we're real big about supporting your folks, supporting small businesses, mm-hmm. especially small black owned businesses. So um, as we come in contact with um, either businesses with with merchandise or clothing lines, you know we'll definitely be wearing them on our video podcast so that you all can see them. And if you like what you're seeing, obviously we'll, we'll drop links for you all to go in and purchase and support those businesses as well. Cause those small businesses are really the backbones of all the local economies that we have here. Not necessarily the big Walmarts and targets and Lowe's. Uh, it's the smaller businesses that have been struggling during this pandemic. So um, anything we can do to support them. And then anyone who's, you know, decided to, to take this opportunity in the pandemic to start their own, we definitely want to support them as well. Absolutely. So, if you got stuff and you just feel like sending it to us for free, uh, we will also make it public, let everybody know, and take 15% contribution of all of your... <laughs> all right, just so kidding. Not going clo- to do that. We're closing but out. We will, if, if you do feel like you want us to put something out there, feel free to send it our way, and we'd be more than happy to rep your brand on our podcast, video cast youtube and cast we're about to get out but before we do i gotta give a shout to my man jarell uh who gave us some really awesome feedback and um helped me out with with a title that i should have given our, our last episode uh, if you noticed there was a there was a naming scheme where vibes was involved with everything and, I, and we went away from it for the last episode we're going to re- return to it for this episode and he gave me a title that i should have thought of but i didn't so shout out to Jarrell, my man. Thank you for the feedback. We love you. And um, when we actually get a budget, maybe we'll bring you on as like a consultant or something like that. Speaking of Jarrell, who we share an HBO Max account with, <laughs> I happen to watch Wonder Woman on your account. He was probably going to watch it anyway, though. It doesn't matter. It, I, if, if you share an account with me or David, I will watch random things and ruin your algorithm. Joe, you're next. So, that being said, we're going to take it out of here. We love you guys. Love you. Thanks for watching. Thanks Stay for safe. being part of the Hope vibe you had tribe. a Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Um, happy New Year. Be safe. If you're going to crowd, if you're going to get with family, wear a mask, social distance, just be safe. We'll see you guys in the new year. Rush Vibes. We out. New Year, new podcast. Stop me now. Stop me now. Stop me now. Yeah, I done came Can't way too far to stop me now Can't stop me stop now, me now. Can't God ain't bring me this far to love